up, Impact? How we doing? How we doing? Huh? Doing good? Man, uh, can we just get up for worship team? I just, thanks guys. They just led us so well tonight, and uh, what a cool way to start off the night by just saying, let's come adore our king. Let's come adore Jesus. And uh, I just want to say, uh, if we haven't met, my name's Jaden, and I get to be uh, your worship pastor. And I just got to tell you guys, like seeing you every week, just just loving Jesus, worshiping him, responding to who he is and what he's done is one of the greatest joys of my life. So I just want to say thank you for letting me do that because it's seriously a big deal to me and I, I love it. Um, so last week, we started this new series called Holy Moments and uh, Tanner was talking with us about Joseph, right? And how Joseph responded to the Lord and obeyed him. And how just one moment of obedience can change uh, the course of an entire life. We never know what God might do with just one moment of obedience. And so tonight, we're going to kind of continue on in the same vein, in the same theme. And we're going to be looking at the Christmas story, looking at Mary and seeing how she responded to God. And how just one moment of surrender changed her entire life. So let me just ask you guys a question really quick. You guys ever been to a, a pizza party? Whoa. You guys have been to a pizza party, right? Can I hear like a hoorah or something for pizza? There we go. Oh, I like that. I like that. Hey, I, I, I think we've all been to a, a pizza party, but if not, we've all been to a party with pizza, right? Okay, and here's the thing about pizza parties. They're awesome until they're not. Because check this out, everyone's eating all this pizza, and it's all, oh, this is delicious, wow. And then all of a sudden, we get down to the last slice, and you're looking at it, and your buddy's looking at it, and it's looking back at you, and it's saying, which one of you is going to take me? And you just think, fine, it'll be me. You reach for it, boom, that zaw is mine. Okay, you ever been there? Just, no? Wow, oh my goodness, I just thought that was a human experience. Man, you're just looking at that thing, and you just finally give up and take it. Well, uh, anyway, the point is, uh, I had an experience a little bit like that this year. Um, if, you, if you guys don't remember this, totally fine. But last year, I gave a message, and I revealed uh, my top Spotify artist last year. Does anyone, if you remember it, that's fine. But does anyone want to guess? Oh, hey, you guys got it. It was Taylor Swift, okay? So, so I had a... I had a thing, it was a little bit like the pizza where I just said, you know what, fine. And this year, I listened to her even more, okay? I made the top 8% of listeners. Yeah! All right, I feel good about it. A new record for me. Uh, did, can anyone beat that? Anyone beat that? Yeah? What were you? Top 1%. Top 1%. Wow, you tied this girl earlier. Did you go to see the movie? No? Did you go see her, Taylor? No, but you're just, a, you're just a super fan anyway? Hey, way to go. That's great. That's great. Point five. Point five. Woo! Holy cow. That's commitment. Man, you're not shaking that off anytime soon. That's crazy. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Well, anyway, the reason I bring all this up, the reason I bring up Taylor Swift is like I think that's the kind of surrender that we're most familiar with. It's the kind of surrender where we go, all right, fine. And we kind of throw our hands up and we just sort of give up. We might quit. We might stop fighting. We might just say, you know what? That's enough for me. And that's the kind of surrender that we normally think about. But tonight, I want to talk to you about a little bit of a different kind of surrender. Um, when my wife and I, when we first got married, when Molly and I first got married, she really wanted a dog. And I knew that. But I did not want a dog. And she knew that. Uh, and so, you know, there's allergies, there's the dog hair that gets everywhere, uh, there's the poop, ew, there's, uh, there's, there's all these things you got to do, you got to buy a dog, I don't know if you guys know this, they're expensive, and I was just like, you know what, I don't want to surrender and give up and sacrifice all of that stuff, that just doesn't sound good to me, but Molly, she works at a vet clinic, so what does she see all the time? Dogs, that's right. And one day, this little miniature dachshund puppy, this little miniature dachshund puppy shows up, and his name is Stuart Little. Pretty cute. But here's the deal. 
she just it gets smitten with this little puppy, and she starts talking about him day after day, and wouldn't you know it, a couple months later, we come home with Bernard. You want to go to the next one? He's cute. He's cute, right? Here, uh, uh, you can go to the next one. That's him. That's him today, right? Like, he's cute. He's a great little dog. He's awesome. Like, we like him a lot. And even though I was very resistant to it, I discovered that I, I really, I like him. Like, he's a pain in my butt, and he does get hair everywhere, but look at him, right? He's a great dog. Uh, he's really brought a lot of joy to our lives. He's a total dork, um, but he's, he is our dog now. He's, you know, he's my dog now. Um, but I want to bring something to your attention. Um, I didn't give up. I didn't give up on what I wanted, but uh, I gave to the one I loved, right? Molly wanted a dog. She's a person I love more than anything, and I didn't give up what I wanted. I gave to the one I loved, and that's the kind of surrender we're really going to be talking about today. Our big idea is this. Surrender is not giving up. It's giving to God. Surrender's not giving up. It's giving to God. And this type of surrender, it's, it's not quitting. It's not accidental. It's not throwing your hands up in exasperation. It's choosing to place something in God's hands. It's giving to God. It's not giving up. And so this is where Christmas comes in. So if you have your Bibles with you, uh, turn to Luke chapter 1. We're going to be starting in verse 26. And we're going to be looking at Mary and how she gives to God in a crazy, awesome way. And while you guys turn there, uh, let me just pray for us as we open up God's word. So again, that's Luke chapter 1, starting verse 26. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight. God, we just come before you and, and we want to give this time to you. Lord, would you just be able to, or would you just do something in us where we just, we don't pay attention to the distractions, where we're not focused on anything else but you right now. God, may we listen to your word. Will you give us those ears to hear and eyes to see? God, would you help us uh, forget anything if it's untrue? Forget anything if it's not from your word. But God, if there are things that are true and from your word that are said tonight or uh, 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 during this message or in small groups, God, would you help us to remember those things and then put them into practice? God, give us courage to be honest with ourselves tonight and to look to you for everything. God, we love you and give this time to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, as you are looking, you're turning to that passage, let me just set up for you a little bit about what's going on. The Israelite people have been under the Roman rule, right? These Roman guys, they're a little nasty. They're a little bit mean. And the Israelite people are desperate for change. And they haven't heard from God in like 400 years. And so they're like, God, what's going on? Why, why is this happening? This isn't the way we were hoping things would go. But then one day, this angel shows up to this old guy named Zechariah. And, and the angel's like, hey, Zechariah, you and your wife, you're going to have a baby. And Zechariah's like, she's not having a baby. She's as old as I am. And he's shocked. And so keep in mind this miraculous pregnancy. And keep in mind God's silence as we read this story. Uh, starting in, again, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. He sent him to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, uh, who was a descendant of David. Now, the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Now, Mary was greatly troubled at this. And she wondered what kind of greeting this might be. She's like eating her Cheerios, and all of a sudden there's an angel going, hey, you. Like, wouldn't that be a little weird? Now, Mary was greatly troubled. She wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of your forefather David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Well, how will this be? Asked Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. I don't probably need to explain this to you guys, but usually virgin equals no babies, right? She's confused. Like, actually, 
You know, we know the end of the story, but she is confused. What's going to happen? So the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will rest upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So even Elizabeth, your relative, she's going to have a child in her old age. She who is unable to conceive is in her sixth month of pregnancy. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. I am the Lord's servant. That would be a little bit tough to say. Mary's like 14 or 15. Angel shows up. It's not like angels are all over the place. Angel shows up and says, hey, you're going to have a baby and not just any baby. You're going to have the son of God, the savior of the world. And she's probably thinking if she's anything like, like a normal person, she's probably thinking, that's not how I wanted my day to go. Right? She's thinking, that's not how I even wanted my life to go. Mary was engaged, getting ready for this wedding, getting ready. She's got plans. She's got expectations. She's got things she wants to do with her life. But God had better plans. But God had better plans. And lucky for us, she surrendered to God and said, I am the Lord's servant. She surrendered. But you see, Mary didn't give up up, but she gave to. She gave her entire self to God when she said, I am the Lord's servant. And this is the cool thing about this that I, I want you to remember. Mary didn't give up who she was, but she gave who she was to God. I'll say it one more time. Mary didn't give up who she was, but she gave who she was to God and said, I am the Lord's servant. Now, I believe that God calls us to give up things in our lives, sin, harmful relationships, bad habits, you know, these kinds of things. But I think ultimately God wants us to give ourselves to God and say, I am your servant. In other words, the point of surrender is becoming a servant. How else can we become a servant? Like my mentor Ryan says that so often we ask God to use us, but then God calls us to, to use us, and we're like, I don't think I want to do that. That sounds pretty tough. And so what we need to do is become usable. We need to surrender and give ourselves to God so he can do something in our lives. So let me ask you right now, whose servant are you? Whose servant are you? Do you serve yourself? Do you serve other people's expectations? Do you serve your family more than God? Do you serve grades more than God? Do you serve social pressure more than God? Whose servant are you? You see, the, the angel said that Mary's favored. But I don't think that Mary was favored because she was especially smart or strong or gifted or had extraordinary accomplishments. But I actually think that Mary was favored because... God knew she was his servant. God knew Mary was his. He knew how she would respond, that she would surrender. So keep that in mind because we're going to continue on the story. We'll start back in verse 39. It says, at that time, Mary got ready. She hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and then greeted Elizabeth. Now, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. But why am I so highly favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And so blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Elizabeth cried out, Blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. You see, Mary trusted God. He, she heard his words. She trusted him, and then she gave herself to him. And as a result, she was blessed. She was changed, and she was sent on a mission to be God's son, God's son's mom, the mother of God's son. You get it. Anyway, she was given a mission, right? She's given a mission. So is there something that you need to give to God? 
Like, are you right now, you've got some expectations in your life. You've got some plans in your life. You've got things, you know, that are coming to you. But is there something you need to give to God so that he can do like he did in Mary's life and change you? Is there something you need to give to God so that he can put you on mission? Is there something you need to give to God so he can actually bless you? And so as we think about this idea of surrender and giving things to God, I think that for each of us, there's really three key areas I want to talk about tonight that we need to give to God. Now, I think that it's, it's really easy to say, God, I want to give you everything. And I think we should give God everything. But I, if you're like me, everything is hard to, like, imagine. Like, that's all of the things. So we sometimes need to break down everything so that we can identify key things in our lives that we should give to God. Because otherwise we're stuck in the, all of the things and we don't really get anywhere. If you're like me, at least. So the first thing that I want to uh, share with you that I think that we need to give to God, it's our time. The first area of our life that we need to give to God is our time. Think about this. We, we all have the same amount of time, right? Like every, between the people, right? Some people have more stuff. Some people have more you know, talent in one area. Some people might do better at school or sports, like two things I was terrible at. And there's so much that there's differences, but we all have the same amount of time. We all have 24 hours, right? I mean, man, no one's nodding. Yes, we do all have 24 hours. I, like I said, I was bad at school, but like I got that one. I got that one down, okay, guys? 24 hours. And we all, we all really need to give God our time. It's something that we all can do and something we all should do. Now, most of us, I get it, we're, we're busy with school, family, maybe a job, maybe we're getting ready for college, like figuring out the FAFSA. I don't even know how to say that word. And I heard it got delayed. Like, there's so much going on, and I get that. We're busy people, but we all need to give our time to God. Because if we, if we don't give any time to God, how can we know him? If we don't give any time to God, how can we serve him? How can we worship him? How can he send us on mission? If we don't give him any time, how can we love him? And th now, there's really a lot of ways that we can give God our time. And I just want to give you a couple really basic, simple, practical ways we can give God our time. And the first one is just to pray. Praying is basically talking to God and listening for his voice. Essentially, it's spending time with him. It's just saying, God, I'm here. I'm for you. God, I'm, I'm going through this right now. Would you talk to me through this? Would you help me through this? Would you speak to me through this? God, would you use this event in my life? We're just making ourselves available to him. So it's a way that we give him our time, surrender it before him. Now, if anyone in here doesn't know how to pray or has never done that before or is confused about it, please talk to your small group leader. Talk to me. Talk to Sav or Tanner or Bree or, or anybody because prayer is so easy and you can do it and I never want you to be intimidated by it because we can do it at any time and God will always listen to you no matter what's going on. So we need to pray. Uh, another way we can give God our time is through TOG. Time alone with Man, you guys got it, all right? Talk, right? Like jumping into the Bible, jumping into God's word, what that means is that they're the words of God. It's what he wrote for you so that you could get to know him. So a way you can give God your time is just to open up his words and listen to him. Just check out what he's got to say. Because I, I, I don't want to make a lot of promises or anything, but I, I can promise you this. You will be changed by the word of God. You will be changed as you read it. You will be changed as you put it into practice because the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces our very bones and marrow down to our souls. And so when you give God your time and you spend it with him, he's going to do some pretty incredible things. Now, another way you can give your time is, is by serving. Now, a lot of you, a lot of you serve here at Pathway. You serve in Kid City or worship or tech or um, just so many areas. And a lot of you guys do that, and I want to thank you for that because that's awesome. 
But if you are not currently serving at, at this church or somewhere else or maybe a different church that you attend, whatever, I would just encourage you, get plugged in and start serving. Because as just one example, just one example, Kid City here at Pathway Guys, there are so many kids who need. They don't want, they need to be shown the love of Jesus. And you can love on those guys. And you can show them the love of Christ just by giving your time. You don't need anything else but your time. And so I, I think it's so important for us to give our time through serving. Now, just the last thing I'll mention here on time is that I think some of us guys, we need to give God our time as it relates to sin. If you're like me, we can go through seasons where we actually devote and spend a lot of time to sin. Like, it's kind of awkward or like weird to hear that, but like if you think about it, sometimes we do that, right? And so it's important for us to give that time to God. Like for some of us, we need to put down our phones. You know, TikTok is great until it isn't. Like one minute you're watching a squirrel skydive, fly through the air and land in a bowl of chocolate pudding. You're like, I love it. And the next minute you're being tempted. You're being tempted to lust. You're being tempted to look at something you know you shouldn't. You're being tempted towards envy and comparison. You're being tempted to message someone you know you shouldn't message because it's going to lead you in the wrong direction. Some of us just need to spend less time on our phones, just as one you know, kind of practical example. But for others of us, we need to change up who we hang out with a little bit, not because those people are evil or bad or whatever, but because we know that they're not leading us towards Jesus. We need to just say, Jesus... This time is for you, and so I'm going to change up my ways a little bit here. I'm going to give it to you instead. Some of us just need to say no. It's easy to kind of like say from here, right? But I just want to challenge you because some of us need to say no to certain parties, to certain events. We need to say no to certain apps. We need to say no to, to going to certain people's houses because that's a way that we give God our time. And we say, that's for you, Jesus. Now, 1 John chapter 3, verse 5 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. What I think that that's saying is that God will do crazy, beautiful things in your life. When you give him your time, when you honor him with your time, and when you dedicate your time to him, he will do incredible things. Now, the second area of our lives that I think that all of us need to surrender is our wounds the areas of our life where we carry hurt. Now, um, truthfully, this is one of the hardest areas for me to talk about because sometimes our hurt, hurts and our, and our wounds, they're the things that we keep hidden away from everybody else. They can be the things from our past we don't want others to know about. In fact, we sometimes try to hide our wounds from God too. We just do. We, we want to hide that person our friends betrayed to us, lied to us. We want to hide that from that person who hurt us. We want to hide that memory that you just don't want to talk about. Our wounds so often keep us from surrendering to God, and we just don't always know how to handle it. Uh, when I was like 15, uh, I, I think I was potentially clinically insane because I would run four miles every day. Like, that's silly. Sorry to say it, that's a weird thing to do. Like being out of breath and sweating and stuff, like what? Anyway, the point is one day I was running and I was, I was running my fastest. I was running my strongest. I was running my hardest. And I felt so good about my time. I was like a minute ahead of my time. And I had my headphones in. I'm listening to music. I'm in my neighborhood. And I decided to cross the road, just turn into the road without looking. <laughs> Bam. I get hit by a Dodge Ram truck. It's just, I, I swear this is real. I get hit with this truck, I land like 25 feet down the road, because I, when I was 15, I weighed like five pounds, and I'm running, okay? <laughs> Just what happened? Just what happened? I'm laying there on the ground, I'm laying there on the ground, and I'm out of breath, and I think I'm about to like die, right? It's like scary, okay? And uh, I'm all out of breath. <gasps> Um, but I didn't even, like, I was so freaked out, I didn't even feel the impact of the truck. But about 30 minutes later, 
Uh, and this is the coolest thing. Like, this is a genuine testimony of how God intervened in my life. I didn't even have a broken bone. But I had road rash. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what road rash is. But road rash is essentially when multiple layers of skin get scraped off of your body all at once. And it usually covers a big area. So my entire shoulder, my leg, I had a big chunk of skin uh, out, of my, uh, out of my ankle, right? And the reason I'm telling you all this is I go from laying down on the ground, on the pavement. I go from there to the doctor's office where they have to clean my road rash. Because there's um, gravel in there and uh, blood and like uh, shredded up skin and stuff. So they have to clean it so it doesn't get infected. Okay, I know it's gross, but listen, I, I really want to make a point here. Um, the doctors had to get in there, and they had to, they had to scrub it away. And, and that hurt so much worse than getting hit by the truck, which sounds a little bit weird, but it's true. Um, the disinfectant they used just stung so bad. You know, I'm like grabbing the table. I'm like, oh, I hate you, doctor. You know, I'm so, you know, upset. Um, but I got to tell you the truth. Had I not given myself to that cleaning, had I not done that, that road rash, which again covered a big part of my body, if I hadn't gotten that cleaned out, I could have gotten infected. Uh, there's cases where like gravel can like get stuck under your skin. The skin can grow over the gravel and it can stay in there for a long time. And the infections that you can get can last a long time. And so the point that I'm making, and you might be ahead of me on this, is that's the kind of thing we need to do with God. We need to give ourselves to him. We need to give our wounds to him to expose our wounds to his cleaning. We need to expose our wounds to his scrubbing, his healing. Those doctors, even though I was like mad at them, they were helping me out, Right? They were helping me out, and that is what God wants to do for us. He wants to heal our wounds and shape us through his love and grace so that our wounds don't shape us. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, just says this, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give your worries and your cares to God, for he cares for you. Give your wounds to Jesus. That's how you humble yourself before him. You, you might just do that through just saying, Jesus, I give you these wounds. Will you change me? Will you heal me? It, that might look like you need to talk to a small group leader and say something you've never said before and be extremely brave. That might look like you need to forgive somebody that you don't want to forgive. That might look like a lot of things because I don't know the answers for all their wounds, but I know that all of our wounds need to go to Jesus. We got to give it to him. He will not turn us away. And he will do incredible and beautiful things through your life when you give him your wounds. Now, really, the, the third area that I want to talk about tonight that we need to give to God is control. If you're like me or like a regular human being, this is hard. This is tough. This is tricky. Okay? I don't like to do what other people tell me to do. The other week I was sick, and Molly, who cares about me, came to me and she said, you should rest. And I said, you should rest. I was like, you're going to tell me what to do? I don't want to rest. I'm going to go mow the lawn and work overtime. Like, I was like rebellious. I'm like coughing and shivering. And she's like being nice to me, you know, like caring about me. But we have this weird thing where we don't like anyone else to control our lives. We have this compulsive issue to try to be our own God. And so I think that when I, like, when I think about giving God control of my life, like, it freaks me out. Like, it petrifies me. I'm like, what will he do? Can I hear an amen? Like, is that you? Yeah, man. Okay, I think there's a lot of people nodding. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. But the truth is, like, you and I aren't very good at controlling our own life. Like, I've got Bernard, right? But the other week, I accidentally fed him a half a nutty buddy which is chocolate and peanut butter. One of those things is great for your dog, the other one's not. I had to call my wife at the vet. Hey, baby, I think our dog's going to die. <laughs> yeah, you can come get him. You can come get him. No, you're going to send the ambulance. Okay. Yep, good. Okay. He was fine. I'm just kidding. My point is, though, my point is, though, like, we're not good at controlling our own lives. But God, who keeps the planet spinning, 
who keeps this whole world in order, he's like, let me in on your life because I love you, because I care about you. So when was the last time that you went to God's word before making a big decision? When was the last time we prayed to God and said, God, what should I do here? Will you help me? Will you give me wisdom? When was the last time that, that we were like asking God before we asked the girl out, asked the guy out? Like, God, are they good for me? Are, is that what you have for my life? Like, we don't do that very much. And I'm like, me too. Like, do we ask God before we go down that career path or before we choose that best friend? Do we let God in on our choices? Because God is so good. He's so loving to you that he lets you choose. Like, he's that nice to you. But I need to put it out there. We just need to give God control, no matter what we're thinking or feeling. Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And in all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. That's just what we need to do at the end of the day. Because he's smarter, stronger, wiser, more loving than we could ever be. And so if there's something in your heart, something in your life you need to give God control of, I would just encourage you to do it. Say, God, this is yours. I give it to you. I'm choosing to place this before you. Don't try to be your own God. Give him control. Um, Some of us right now are like we're hearing that, and we're probably wrestling a little bit with the question, why should I give God? Why should I give to God? Like, why should I give God my time? What's he going to do with that? It's my time. Some of us are like, why would I give God my wounds? I'm comfortable hiding them. I don't want any of that exposed, and I certainly don't want it clean. I don't want to change. And a lot of us don't want to give God control because it's scary and it's hard. So if you're wrestling with the question, why should I give to God, let me just Say it like this, because God is good. And what I mean by this is, is our perception of how good he is, like our idea or understanding of how good he is, is outmatched by the demonstration of his goodness. Our perception of his goodness is outmatched by the demonstration of his goodness. If you want to know why you should give your time, your wounds, or control to Jesus, look at him. Look at him. Because the truth is, Jesus gave his time for you. Jesus left his heavenly position for 33 years and died on a cross for you. Jesus gave his time. Jesus gave his wounds. While he was on the cross being beaten, while he was so wounded and weak, he said, forgive them, Father, because they don't even know what they're doing. You see, Jesus gave his wounds for you and for me. And Jesus gave his control for us. While he was in the garden, he's like, God, if you could take this cup of suffering, if I could not go die on the cross, please. But not my will be done, but God, your will be done. Jesus gave control for you. He gave his time, his wounds, his control for you so that we could benefit, so that we could be adopted into his family, so that we could have eternal salvation with him. He did it for us. He took our place. Now, I know that it can be hard to trust God sometimes. I can get that. But he always shows up. Like Mary was probably like, this is pretty scary stuff. I got to change my whole life. But God showed up and did an incredible and beautiful thing for the rest of humanity. Or a little bit like with me and Bernard. Like, I didn't know what owning a dog would look like. And I was really scared about it and messed up my plans about what I wanted to do. And when we got the dog, Molly didn't sleep well. And I sure enough had to clean up tons of poop. And it was a bummer. But looking back, like that little dog has become a huge part of our lives. And we love him. And he's hilarious. And I am so glad that I gave to Molly. We don't know the outcome when we give. But we know who we're giving to. We know who we're giving to. So I just encourage you, remember God's goodness and trust God with your time. Just give it to him. Trust God with your wounds. Just give it to him. Trust God with control of your life. Give it to him. And he will not fail you. See what he does. Let's be a little bit more like Mary and place these categories in God's hands and say, I am the Lord's servant. And to paraphrase Elizabeth, blessed is the one who believes that the Lord will fulfill his promises. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we just want to say that we love you. Thank you so much for the demonstration of your goodness. Jesus, you are incredible. We love you. Please give us the courage and the strength to give to you what belongs to you and what you're calling us to surrender before you tonight. Help us to be like Mary and declare that we are your servants. Jesus, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen.